Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. In September of 2020, NVIDIA launched the long-awaited RTX 30 series. They were widely well-received, stocks were plentiful, and everyone lived happily ever after. Oh wait, that's not what happened at all. Today, almost two months post-launch, the RTX 3080 is still very hard to find. Should you keep searching, keep your older 80 series card for a while longer, or perhaps consider something else. Today, we're going to find out by comparing four generations of 80 series cards from the 980 to the 3080. Today's video is brought to you by Fanatical, your source for awesome PC game deals. Save on new AAA games and classic indie titles with discounts over 90% in some cases. More details after the video. This is the third of three videos comparing these four video cards together. Today's video will be at 4K high detail. Why three separate videos? Because stuffing 96 benchmarks into a single video is just too long. Links to the other two resolutions will be down in the video description below if you'd like to see them. First, is 4K the most common resolution gamers play at? Of course not, far from it. 1080p remains highly popular and the most common resolution on the Steam hardware survey. You might think that 1440p is second, but it isn't. 720p is. However, keep in mind that the Steam Hardware Survey covers the whole world, which covers a lot of budgets and use cases. So while 1440p isn't next on the list, it probably is for the target audience of an RTX 3080. Keep in mind that 4K is a very demanding resolution to run AAA games in, and if you're serious about playing new games like Watch Dogs Legion, Cyberpunk 2077, and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you more or less have to commit to buying every new flagship GPU every generation. This is one reason why I personally switched from 4K to 1440p ultrawide on my personal gaming PC at home. It lowers the hardware requirements and makes waiting for the right hardware deals easier. This video is not a review of the RTX 3080 itself. I won't be talking about CUDA cores or ray tracing technology here. It's meant to be a straight up comparison of the four cards, including real performance numbers, percentage difference, dollar cost per frame per second charts, and a fresh look in newer games on all the cards. All of the benchmark charts in this video, along with the other two resolutions, are already posted to Patreon, linked in the video description below. If you'd like an easy way to see all of the numbers without scrolling through a video, please consider supporting us there for just over $2 per month. Our test bench for today is our standard GPU test setup featuring the Intel i9-10900K 10-core 20-thread processor at 5 GHz, a Corsair H150i Pro 360mm liquid cooler, a Gigabyte Z490 Aorus Master motherboard, 32GB of DDR4 4000 CL19 RAM, a 500 gigabyte Samsung 970 Evo boot SSD, an ADATA SX8100 premium two terabyte game SSD, and a Seasonic 80 plus titanium prime 750 watt power supply. All of the footage you're going to see here was captured on an Avermedia Live Gamer 4K capture card on a second PC, so the test bench didn't even know it was being recorded. Our first game today is Assassin's Creed Odyssey, one of the more challenging games to run due to its infamous Ubisoft optimization. You can see all four card benchmarks on screen now in a quad format. This lets you watch all the tests at the same time, but it does make it rather hard to see the numbers in real time in those tiny, tiny windows. At 4K, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is really only playable on the RTX 2080 or the 3080, falling way behind on the 1080. Lowering render resolution or a few details like clouds and shadows would help the 2080, but to get a really smooth experience, you need a 3080. Anno 1800 is a game we recently added by viewer request, something new that isn't a first-person shooter or similar type action game. 
This time we have the game in quads, but zoomed in to show just the MSI afterburner part so you can read the numbers easier on a smaller screen or mobile device. The performance jump from 2080 to 3080 is dramatic in this game, going from 66 frames per second to 111. That's nearly double, which is what Jensen promised during the launch event for the 3080. Now you could turn the details down, of course, to make this playable on a GTX 1080, but how many of you buy 4K monitors or 4K TVs to play games at low detail? Borderlands 3 is a challenging game to run at 4K, only reaching 76 frames per second on an RTX 3080. That's the same frame rate it runs at on a 2080 at 1440p. Here we are showing you the 2080 and 3080 performance side by side so you can see everything more clearly. The 2080 falls far behind here and shows a good example of what I meant when I said you're more or less committing to buying the new flagship every generation if you're serious about AAA 4K gaming. Looking at the chart, you can see how silly a GTX 980 is for 4K gaming, so we won't be talking about that very much here, but it is here on the charts to give you a sense of scale of improvement across the past six years. You might get the 1080 or 2080 above 60 frames per second at low detail, but that's kind of sad for a video card that was $700 two months ago. F1 2020 is one of those games that runs well on modest hardware while looking awesome. Why can't more games do that? Here you can see the 1080 on the left and the 2080 on the right. Want 60 frames per second in this driving game? A four-year-old GTX 1080 will do it. Want 144 frames per second? The brand new RTX 3080 will do that on the 1% low. If you've got a 4K 144Hz monitor and you want to play driving games and esports games on it, the RTX 3080 will generally do that. However, for 4K 60Hz gaming, even a GTX 1080 is still good enough at 4K for such games. Far Cry New Dawn, the full price DLC to Far Cry 5 is next. Now, Far Cry 6 is coming sometime next year, but for now, this. The GTX 1080 on the left is not enough to get playable performance at 4K in this open world game. You're just going to get all kinds of slowdown and input lag. The RTX 3080 on the right shows just how far GPUs have come in four years. It is more than double the performance of the 1080. On the graph of all four GPUs, the GTX 980 is of course silly at 4K in 2020. But if you went to low detail and lowered the render resolution, you could probably do it. But that would rather defeat the point of 4K now, wouldn't it? In truth, only the RTX 3080 here is really solid performance. The 2080 looks okay, but remember this is a benchmark, not real world performance, which will be lower during those critical large battles. Ghost Recon Breakpoint is a demanding open world game that pulls no punches. Here you can see the RTX 2080 versus the RTX 3080 side by side. Amazingly enough, the 2080 holds its own here, running fast enough to be playable at 4K high detail. I can tell you from personal experience, however, that you'll get dips well below these numbers at times. One of the reasons I dropped to 1440p at home. I'm just not going to say anything about the 980 anymore. It speaks for itself. The 1080 actually could work if you ran at 80% render resolution and medium detail, but I think you're kidding yourself with that one. It's all about the RTX 3080 or bust for 4K gaming going forward into 2021. Horizon Zero Dawn, a PS4 port to the PC that is a good example of the mistake some people make when comparing console hardware to PC hardware. Consoles are very well optimized to run in one specific configuration with games adjusted to have the right amount of detail to run on that specific hardware. There are no medium, high, or ultra detail options on a console. On the PC, the RTX 2080 has seven times the graphics performance of a PlayStation 4, yet it cannot hold 60 frames per second at 4K. The 3080 is miles ahead here in performance. 
You can see here on the chart how poorly this game runs on anything but the newest hardware. All three old cards are stacked up on the chart with the 3080 blowing them all away. Shame this card is so hard to find at retail right now. It really is impressive at 4K if you can get it at retail price. That brings us to our final game, The Division 2, one of my favorite games of the past two years. It's like being Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando, rushing into the enemy base and taking out a hundred bad guys without a scratch. Here, we're comparing the 2080 versus the 3080, and boy, what a difference. Almost twice the frame rate going from 59 frames per second to 106 frames per second in a single generation. Looking at the full chart, the story is once again the same. The 3080 is the 4K deal today, assuming you can get one at normal prices. Please remember, this is in high detail, not ultra. If you like all the pretty stuff, that 106 frames per second won't hold in combat situations or with all of the pretty stuff turned up. Our next chart is the 8-game average across all the cards and all the games. The GTX 980 is not a serious card at 4K. Honestly, it never really was, with 4K not being much of a thing back in 2014. It kind of isn't much of a thing in 2020, yet it's still in the single-digit percentages. It actually would play games like Overwatch and Grand Theft Auto V at 4K at lower detail settings, but I wouldn't really suggest it. The RTX 2080 clearly was not the improvement we all hoped it was, coming in at just 65 frames per second average versus 48 frames per second on the GTX 1080. While that is faster, it's only 35% faster, which really isn't worth replacing a video card over. Finally, that brings us to 118 frames per second average and 92 frames per second, 1% low on the 3080. Again, notice, the 1% low on the 3080 is higher than the average frame rate on the 2080. This is a real upgrade, folks. These numbers are awesome for 4K gaming, and if you're buying a card today that you want to actually last for more than a week, you've come to the right place. To save you some math, here are the percentage differences between the cards using the average frame rate of all eight games. Again, the GTX 1080 and 3080 are the deals here, with the 1080 being a whopping 78% faster than the 980, and the 3080 being an incredible 337% faster than the GTX 980. Removing the GTX 980 from the list shows a different way to look at the numbers, with the 2080 being 35% faster than the 1080, and the 3080 being more than double the performance of the 1080. Now, is it worth upgrading from a 2080 to a 3080? If you're serious about 4K gaming, the answer is a complete and solid yes. Finally, that leads me to my favorite chart of the bunch, the dollar cost per frame per second difference chart. Now, I've put the prices of each card on the screen as they stand in November of 2020, either new or on eBay. The GTX 1080 used for $300 is worth considering, depending upon what games you want to play and what you're willing to do, but honestly, I would hold out for a new 3080. The other two really aren't worth considering unless the prices change. An RTX 2080 is worth maybe $100 more than a 1080, but that's about it. It should be selling for $400, but it isn't due to the 3080s being completely out of stock. Once it does come into stock, expect the 2080 to fall quickly in value. Three very key points are left out of this comparison and conclusion. First, the RTX 3080 Ti with 20 gigabytes of VRAM is rumored to be coming in January of 2021. Now, in fairness, it is also rumored to cost $1,000, so that kind of throws a wrench into the works. Second, the RX 6800 XT launches in the middle of November for $650 and comes with a whopping 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, we don't have one to test yet, but AMD claims it is equal to the RTX 3080 in performance. Expect real street prices to be in the $750 range, however, for premium cards from board partners, assuming they don't sell out in two seconds flat. Finally, the RTX 2080 Ti exists, which isn't shown here. It is between 25 and 35% faster than the 2080, 
So if you spent the big bucks for one of those recently, it might be rather painful to swap it out again for a 3080. Wait for the 2080 Ti if you're in this group. Do keep in mind, these performance numbers will be vastly different at 1080p and 1440p, and the differences between the cards as well. That's why this video is only covering 4K. Trying to shove three resolutions across eight games and four cards into one video would make this thing an hour long, and the nuance would be lost in the process. Fanatical is a game key seller that offers publisher sourced game keys at incredible prices. This is not a key reselling site. Everything here is 100% direct from the publishers. Fanatical used to be called Bundle Stars. They have grown beyond their old focus on game bundle deals to include newer games and daily star deals at huge discounts. The offers change daily, so use the link in the video description below to see what's on sale today. You can expect huge discounts on everything from the latest Ubisoft titles like Assassin's Creed and Far Cry to older classics like the Sega Classics Bundle and Atari Vault Bundles to indie games like Fall Guys, Serious Sam 4, and Jackbox Party. Our own game collection has been greatly expanded from purchases at Fanatical, including many of the games that you see benchmarked on our channels in videos like this. We use this site ourselves and we recommend it as a great source of inexpensive games with direct source from the publisher so you can be assured that it's safe. Please use the link in the video description below. It shows Fanatical that you support our content and we also get affiliate commissions on anything that you purchase with it, so your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you all so much for watching this to the very end. Two gold stars for all of you. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you love it. Remember, subscribe to the channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions. That's what the comment section is for. I'm interested to see what all of you think of this. How many of you actually have a 4K monitor? Do you play on a 4K television? Do you play at a different resolution? Let me know what games and what resolution you run at in the comments below. I will use that feedback to adjust our future testing. Check the links in the video description below. Links to Amazon, Newegg, and eBay for all of these cards and a few others will be down there as well. Plus the other two videos of the other two resolutions that I mentioned before. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.